Um, in 1799, Constable said, I fancy I see Gainsborough in every hedge and hollow tree. In that same year, he persuaded his father to let him to go to London and attend the Royal Academy, age 23. Mm. So, Constable was already, you know, just because of where he was born and his life trajectory, he's already 23 when he attends the Royal Academy, and I believe Turner became an academician in his 20s. Um, so, there's already... He's already on the back foot mm -hmm. to Britain's other great landscape painter, yeah. and they are constantly compared. They compared. He compared himself to Turner in his lifetime, mm -hmm. so I don't think it's unfair to draw those comparisons. Yeah, they are often referred to in the same breath, mm -hmm. constantly, like Turner and Constable, which is interesting because I'm sure you'll go into it further. But like, um, yeah, Turner really enjoyed like seemingly much greater success in much his lifetime, more. and. Yeah. Um, yeah, had a lot more opportunity to travel, and because I'm not sure how often if Constable like left Britain or Constable travel. did not leave Britain, no. as far as I'm aware. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. I think that must have kind of determined like yeah, like the work like really honed in on like British landscape painting, where Turner was able to like simultaneously do like make paintings in Britain and of Britain, and mm. but then also to go further afield and like engage with the world at large. And, yeah. Um, um, he did not have the best time during his studies at the Royal Academy and his work was not particularly appreciated. He missed Suffolk and it became very clear to him that his ambition to be a landscape painter was very much going against the prevailing tastes at the time, but he persevered. In 1802, he wrote home to a friend, I shall shortly return to Burkholt where I shall make some laborious studies from nature. There is little or nothing in the exhibition, which is the Royal Academy, worth looking up to. There is room enough for a natural painter. This quote perfectly sums up both Constable's mission for his work, which he kept throughout his life, and also his stunning self-confidence, <laughs> which also defined him. <laughs> throughout his life, he felt a deep sense of injustice. Mm -hmm. um, unlike a, you know, some painters who may have felt like, I need to do better, I need yeah. to be better, Constable felt like he, he was um, wronged in yeah. terms of his recognition and his time. He knew that his work was significant and of value, regardless of... Yeah, that not being met mm. and like not having opportunities like that, which I think that is quite impressive, really, to have to be that um, headstrong. He wasn't something. proven wrong, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he moved back to Suffolk that summer, which is 1802. Uh, so at the time that Constables were operating, a lot of landscape paintings had brown as the prevailing colour. That's both due to um, something we. Um, briefly discussed in our Rubens episode, which is that Northern Renaissance artists would frequently use as a technique brown for the foreground, green for the middle ground, and blue for the background. Mm. And um, also, the brown thing is because a lot of the same paintings, when they aged, the mm. varnish would yellow and brown, adding that hue to the whole painting. Mm -hmm. So the foreground that was once brown would be even browner. Wow. Um, and that was really admired in Constable's time, and a lot of artists tried to recreate that. Which just seems so strange to us, because removing brown varnish is one of my favourite things to watch on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's so satisfying. Um, but it's yeah, so little sense, because it's kind of, yeah, like, uh, faux ageing, really, mm -hmm. and I think... Um... I don't know that there was a full realisation that that was mm -hmm. not intentional. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, restoration wasn't at the point that it's at now. Sure. Um, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to sort of say they were ignorant, but no. I don't know how much of that was mm -hmm. them not realising that that paint, that was not that supposed to be that colour, that mm -hmm. it had a freshness pre prior, mm -hmm. or how much of it was just that they really loved brown paintings. Sure. I guess that kind of, that seems kind of slightly contradictory to someone like Turner, though, like working at the same time and enjoying greater success because his paintings are so bright and so vibrant, and like, I just can't imagine the Turner having a varnish that was browning. But then Turner's... Turner's operating in another pocket because yeah, he is true. successfully doing the romanticising, mm -hmm. um, dramatising, surrealising landscape mm -hmm. in a way that Constable's not. Yeah, of course. So I, I wouldn't put him in the same bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're both British landscape painters operating at exactly the same time. Yeah. But there's a reason that, that Turner's style was more appreciated. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's because he's adding that extra twist to the landscape mm -hmm. in terms of like drama and romance and mm -hmm. mythology. Mm -hmm. um, 
So Constable's work, having this really fresh and natural palette of lots of green, would actually have been quite surprising to people at the time. I mm. A little bit revolutionary. Mm. Which is uh, nice. Um, so yeah, in his earlier career, he would take a lot of sketching trips and travel to the Lake District and Peak Districts and showed paintings in the RA exhibition of where he'd travelled to. But he was becoming no closer to his goal of becoming an RA academician. His works were hung in back rooms or quite high. They weren't very big pieces. They really weren't making the impact he was hoping for. So um, his solution to this was almost to sort of double down. And he decided to take seriously the study of the Stour Valley specifically and scenes of a man's interaction with nature that defined his childhood uh, and to really focus on painting Suffolk. 